In the story of Jonah, the people of an entire city were saved because they believed the Word of God spoken by the prophet. It's one of the most dramatic conversion testimonies in the Bible. And you would think that Jonah would have been ecstatic to see such a revival of the people, but he wasn't. In fact, the event made him terribly mad because he despised the Assyrians. They were his enemies and he did not want God to save them. He wanted God to destroy them. The problem is that God does not save people based on our opinion of them. If he did, there were probably some people we would be uncomfortable with God saving because they've been so evil, so hurtful to us or others. Here's what the Bible says. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that we could all be saved. You, me, the vilest of people could be saved. Anybody can be saved. And that's what makes grace so amazing. Today on LEC Online Church, we continue to explore the story of Jonah. And as we do, we are discovering some things about ourselves, maybe things we don't like to admit. I'm Bill Isaacs, and I invite you to come with me, and let's see what God has to say to us from the story of Jonah. We are halfway through our Jonah series as we are learning uh, the lessons about Jonah, and I think that there's some very valuable lessons that we've been learning, and so I thought as we get started here that we would take a look at the three very important lessons that we're learning. The first lesson that we're learning is that God's love extends to all people, regardless of whether we like them or not or whether we're comfortable with them or not. The love of God extends to all humanity. Every person is loved by God. The second thing that we learn is that it's a dangerous thing to resist God. It's a dangerous thing to fight against God. And what we see with Jonah, he just fights with God all the time. He never can get settled that he has to do things God's way. And the third thing that we've learned so far is that none of us, you or I, can take credit for the grace of God that we've been given, the mercy that God has given to us. It did not come to us because of ourselves. And if we're saved today, if you're watching me and you're saved, the only reason that you're saved is because of God's mercy and because of God's grace. And so I want to read just one verse of Scripture to you now. This one verse of Scripture is found in Jonah chapter 3, and it's just verse 10. That's, that's the only one. It says, when God saw what they had done, how they, talking about the people of Nineveh, had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. Let's consider the possibility that someone that you love Maybe your wife or your daughter has been viciously abused or taken advantage of by someone. Or, or maybe you've had a loved one that was in the World Trade Center when the terrorists flew their planes into the building and thousands of people lost their lives. And, and the pain that you felt, the grief that you endured was incredible. And you were trying your best to overcome. And about the time that you feel that you've gotten on top of it, God says, I want you to go to the people that hurt you and I want you to tell them that God, that God loves them, that I will save them. And you say, I can't do that. Well, then you understand the story of Jonah. That's exactly what God had said. These, these terrible and despicable Assyrians who had gone into to Jonah's land and had abused and killed his brothers, now God says, go tell them that I'm going to save them if they will just repent of their sins. And Jonah said, I'm not going. And so it was that in chapter 3, after Jonah has spent this time in the belly of the fish, three days and three nights, and we talked about that last week, and he, he comes to this place where I think he just basically resigns himself that I can't beat God, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do things God's way. He finally gets up and goes to Nineveh, and when he goes to Nineveh and he tells the people of Nineveh the message that God has given, something amazing happens. God saves them. They, they turn to God. They turn to God in their evil and they renounce their sin and God saves them. And when he does, it ticks Jonah off. Now, it may be difficult to understand what it would be like for God to save a whole city. I'm right here in Perry, Ohio, and this 
little community only has a couple of thousand people, but Lake County has more than 200,000 people. And, and, and Nineveh was a city that large, enormous city, over 125,000 people. And the Bible said they, every one, every person turned toward God. And when that happened, it, it absolutely destroyed Jonah because he did not want God to save them. He did not want them to come to Christ. And so as a result, he was forced to be in disagreement with God and to fight against God. This idea of God changing his mind is something because we don't often think about God changing his mind. We, we wrestle with that thought, that idea, can God actually, his mind be changed? Well, the Bible tells us that the God that we serve is a God who is touched and moved by human dynamics. The Bible said he feels the pain. He, he understands our pain and he's moved by the, the extremities and the difficulties that we face. So yes, God changes his mind. And in this story, he did. He said, I'm gonna destroy Nineveh if they don't repent. When they repented, God did in fact spare them from the judgment that he had Jonah to foretell was going to take place. There's another story in the Bible. King Hezekiah was Israel's beloved king and God sent Isaiah in and said, tell the king to set his house in order. He's about to die. And so it was that when he told Hezekiah, Hezekiah turned his face toward God, toward the wall and began to pray out to God and God changed his mind and sent the prophet back in and said, I've heard your prayer. I'm gonna give you 15 more years of your life. So God sometimes does change his mind and the prayers that we pray at times, move the heart of God to action and deed. And so it was. You know, the hustle and bustle of this street that's so obvious and all the commercial stuff that's going on around us is kind of the way life was in Nineveh. It was a busy hustle, bustle city with commerce and the crossroads of, of the Assyrian empire. And yet God moved in with a message from Jonah and God in, in fact ended up saving that whole city. And it leads me to two very important things that I want to remind you in my message today. Here's the first one. That God's plans are not about making you and I happy. They're about saving the world. It's not God's agenda to make you and I happy. It's about saving the world. That's what God's about. You know, sometimes we can become convinced or think that what we need is for God to do what we want him to do so we can be happy. We even sometimes have the misconstrued idea that God's plans are to make us happy. That's not God's plans. God's plans is to redeem a lost world and bring lost humanity to Jesus Christ. And that's the way it was in Nineveh. No matter how ticked off God, Jonah was at God, it wasn't about making Jonah happy. That wasn't God's plan. And Jonah didn't get that, and so that's why he's in disagreement. That's why he's fighting against, because he, think this, he thinks this is about him. I need to remind you today, and me today, that God's plan is about saving lost people in this city, in Perry, Ohio, in Lake County, Ohio, in all the state of Ohio, in the United States of America, in the continents of the world, the plan of God is to save lost people. That's what the Bible says in John 3, 16, isn't it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so that promise is yours and mine and every other person. And that brings me to the second point, and that is that the message of Jesus is powerful. It's a powerful message. And where Jesus Christ is preached, where Jesus Christ is proclaimed, just like we're doing right now by way of the internet. This message will be broadcast and literally has the potential to go around the world. But wherever the message goes, the message of Jesus is powerful. Jesus predicted that, I think, and he said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Now notice what happened, because when Jonah went into Nineveh and he declared the message that God said, repent, in 40 days, our judgment is going to come. Notice what happened. The people responded and they repented and God relented the judgment that fell upon them. Now, I can't get away from this fact. And it's the reason that I ask our team 
to come out here on this street and, and film this today. What if God was able and would be willing to save every person in every car that has passed by here while I've been talking? What about every resident in this county? What, about, what if everyone in this city were to fall on their knees and call on God? Can you imagine what that would mean if every person gave their heart to Jesus? That's what happened in Nineveh because the Bible said that even the kings, they responded powerfully and they declared a fast and all the people responded. And when God saw them, he saw the sorrow and the repentance, just like we preached last week. It's not enough just to say you're sorry. There was a repenting in their heart of what they had done, a changing. In fact, the Bible said that when God saw that they turned from their evil ways, that's what repentance is. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to confess our sins and turn from our evil ways. So let's finish. The Bible said that when Jonah preached the message in Nineveh, the people responded. That's in verse five. Then the Bible says in verse eight that the leaders responded. They responded and declared to all the people. Now look, Sometimes the leaders in our land, they annoy us and frustrate us. But what if every leader that we had, every president, every congressman, every senator, every governor were to declare a righteous fast and to say to the people of America, we must turn our hearts toward God. And what if people did that? What kind of land would this be? You see, the miracle of Nineveh was the enormity of the reality that God saved an entire city. And when the people responded, then God responded. And that's what happens when we respond. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, Jonah's issue is not with Nineveh. Jonah's issue is with God. What's Jonah's problem? It's pride. Jonah was a renowned prophet in Israel. In fact, you can read for yourself in, in first King, second Kings chapter 14, I believe it is. You can read where he is renowned for his prophecy over King Jeroboam. He doesn't want to go back to Israel and tell them, hey, the Assyrians have all given their heart to God and they're just like us. God loves them as much as he loves us. He didn't want to do that. He didn't want to be the bearer of that message. Shame on you, Jonah because I would love to be able to announce that everybody who's been my enemy has come to Christ. I'd love to be able to announce that all of the terrorists have come to Jesus, that every God-hating, atheistic person out there has come to Jesus. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's why Jesus died. That's why he came, so that whosoever will. And the mercy of God extends to every person. Jonah's got pride. He's got prejudice toward people that are not like him. God hates that. You're not gonna get into heaven if you hate people that God made. There's no room for hate, not in our lives, not in our spirits, not in our world. And then Jonah has a disagreement with God. So here's my question as we finish. Will you be a bridge to lost people, bringing them to Jesus? Or will you be a wall that keeps people away from Jesus? Will the testimony of your life be that you did everything that you could to bring the message of hope to people that need to know Christ? Or will the testimony of your life be that you lived in such a way that you made people not want to have anything at all to do with Jesus? Who will you bring to Jesus? Who will you bring to Jesus today? Maybe you're watching me and you don't know Jesus. I wanna give you an opportunity right now to invite Jesus into your heart. You can be like the men of Nineveh. You can hear the message of God's man and you can repent of your sin. And if you pray this prayer that we're about to pray and you pray it with sincerity and you are truly sorry, God will forgive you. The moment that you tell God you're sorry, and if you're sincere about it, God forgives you every time. 
the words are gonna be right here on the screen. Pray this prayer with me right now. God, I am a sinner. I believe Jesus came to die for my sins. And I believe that Jesus will forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I choose Jesus. It's that simple. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, Jesus forgave you. I promise you that he did. And here's a number right here on the screen that you can text the word saved to me and I'll follow up with you because I wanna help you take your next step with Jesus. For those of you that are already saved, perhaps this morning you need to remember that God came into the world to save sinners and he wants you and I to be the messengers to a lost world. So can I encourage you today? Pray the prayer, Lord, help me bring somebody to Jesus. Help me to be the reason somebody wants to know about Jesus Christ. You'll never regret that. Thank you for joining me this week. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. Hello and welcome to Lake Erie Online Church. We're so incredibly excited that you took the time to be with us here today. Whether you're viewing us through the Church Online platform, our church YouTube page or Facebook, or even through our Vimeo page, we thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Just wanted to get on here and remind you of the different ways in which you can give in the offering. The first way that you can give is you can give through uh, a text to give feature that we have. You would text the amount that you wanna give to the number 305-5532. Once again, the number is 305-5532. You know you did it right because as soon as you text the amount you wanna to give to that number, you'll get a text back saying that we received your donation and we thank you so much for that. A second way that you can give is you can go ahead and visit our church website, lakeeriechurch.com, and over on the far right, there's a giving feature. You, 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 click the giving tab, it'll scroll down, you'll click into that and you'll be able to fill out a form for the giving. Just wanna remind you that any amount that you give is all tax deductible. And then of course you can continue to give if you have been the traditional way. You can send an envelope in with the amount that you have to tithe and to give. You can either drop it off here at the church or mail it in and we'll make sure it gets into the offering. We just wanna to continue to thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving, uh, especially during the troubling time that we're coming out of. And it, is, it has gone to building the kingdom of God, and we're so very thankful for that. We hope you enjoy service today. Be blessed, and we'll talk to you again. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where
time.